Extreme remedies are very appropriate for extreme diseases. Natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. Healing is a matter of time, but it is sometimes also a matter of opportunity. The soul is the same in all living creatures, although the body of each is different. A wise man should consider that health is the greatest of human blessings and learn how by his own thought to derive benefit from his illnesses. That which is used develops, that which is not used wastes away. Before you heal someone, ask him if he's willing to give up the things that make him sick. The natural healing force within each of us is the greatest force in getting well. It is far more important to know what person the disease has than what disease the person has. If you are in a bad mood, go for a walk. If you are still in a bad mood, go for another walk. Life is short, our long opportunity fleeting. Experience treacherous, judgment difficult. Ars longa vita brevis acacio precepts. Experimentum periculosum. Idetium D-I-F-F-I-C-I-L-E dot life is short. There art long opportunity fleeting. Experiment dangerous, judgment difficult. Wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. Walking is man's best medicine. As two diseases make a habit of two things to help or at least to do no harm, declare the past, diagnose the present, foretell the future. There are in fact two things, science and opinion. The former begets knowledge, the latter ignorance. People think that epilepsy is divine, simply because they don't have any idea what causes epilepsy but I believe that someday we will understand what causes epilepsy, and at that moment, we will cease to believe that it's divine, and so it is with everything in the universe. If we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise, not too little and not too much, we would have found the safest way to health. Persons who have a painful affection in any part of the body and are in a great measure sensible of the pain are disordered in intellect. Both sleep and insomnolency, when immoderate, are bad. Vita brevis, ars longa, acacio precepts, experimentum periculosum, idetian difficile. The chief virtue that language can have is clearness, and nothing detracts from it so much as the use of unfamiliar words. In whatever disease sleep is laborious, it is a deadly symptom, but if sleep does good, it is not deadly. Persons in whom a crisis takes place past the night preceding the paroxysm uncomfortably, but the succeeding night generally more comfortably. What remains in diseases after the crisis is apt to produce relapses, what medicines do not heal, the lance will. What the lance does not heal, fire will. All the most acute, most powerful, and most deadly diseases, and those which are most difficult to be understood by the inexperienced, fall upon the brain. But if they called everything divine, which they do not understand why there would be no end of divine things, a cure est de legata tampoe, es vezes tampum, es circumstances, only a pure heart can recognize a beautiful and a happy soul. When in a state of hunger, one ought not to undertake labor. In acute diseases, it is not quite safe to prognosticate either death or recovery. Cure sometimes, treat often, and comfort always. 
When sleep puts an end to delirium, it is a good symptom. Eunuchs do not take the gout, nor become bald. All parts of the body which have a function, if used in moderation and exercised in labors in which each is accustomed, become thereby healthy, well-developed, and age more slowly. But if unused, they become liable to disease, defective in growth and age quickly.